back, story makers. Sean Avery here with the next lesson in the Children's Book Council Make Your Own Storybook Competition. Now, we are getting so close to the ending of our storybook. Uh, this is the lesson on how to write a resolution for your storybook. If you're writing a picture book, links are in the description down below for a picture book because it is a little bit different. We're going to be focusing primarily on the words and descriptive language in our storybook creation. <clears throat> so, this is what we've got so far. We've got our story mountain all mapped out. We have got our rough drafts uh, with our introduction where we introduce our setting and our characters. We have uh, built our story up to an exciting conflict where all the action happens. We've written the conflict in uh, two parts. And now uh, we are going to go down story mountain. So we're going to start wrapping it up. And uh, to do that, we've got to write a resolution to this problem. Now, this is the final resolution. And generally, guys, when we are writing a resolution for a story, we have to be very, very careful that uh, it, it all gets wrapped up. There's nothing worse than having a story with uh, all loose ends, you know, problems that don't get resolved. It's, uh, it's really irritating for a reader to have, to have that happen, to read a story where things aren't sort of wrapped up nicely. Um, another thing you also want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that it's your characters that are solving their own problem. And uh, it's not just some magical solution that comes down from uh, out of nowhere, magically solving all your character's issues. You've got to make sure that it's your character that does that, you know? Otherwise, um, it's, it feels like you're kind of cheating. And uh, it uh, also makes for more exciting reading if the character can just get by your main character can get by solving the problem on their wit and ingenuity. So I'm gonna to go to my desk now and I'm gonna write the resolution to my story, Happy as a Hog Out of Mud. And uh, the last time I left Charlesworth Oinkington, uh, he was uh, feeling a little bit alienated, all on his own with the flamingos and uh, they're pretty mean, pretty rude. And he's uh, obviously gotta try, find a way out of that predicament. Alrighty guys, I am ready to write my resolution to my storybook and uh, I'm going to do one important thing in this uh, in this section here. I'm going to make sure that my character solves their problem. Charlie's going to get himself out of the pickle that he's got himself into. As usual, I'm going to make sure that I show don't tell. So uh, describing uh, things that are happening and letting my readers work out what their meaning might be. I'm going to make sure that I write with my senses. What do we see? What do we feel? What do we hear? Um, the last time we left Charlie off in the second part of the conflict, it said they didn't share his interests either. They didn't appreciate poetry, English breakfast tea, and they thought bird watching was an extremely creepy hobby. Charlesworth Oinkington had never felt more alone. All right. Let's get Charlie out of this problem. All right, we have finished the resolution to our story or to my story. It goes like this. He also was starting to get sick of the flamingos. Not only were they not interested in any of his hobbies, but they weren't particularly nice to any other creatures in the bush felt. A troop of, babo a troop of baboons were taking a drink on the edge of their lake when the head flamingo crowed, would you look at the ridiculous red rumps on the beasts? Perhaps they forgot to apply sunscreen to their rear ends. Another chimed in. Hmm, yes, quite. It seemed they had something to say about any animal that walked by. Well, oh, too lumpy, uh, they said to the camels. Too bumpy, they said to the crocodiles. Too jumpy, they said to the frogs. And would you look, the head flamingo began, at those disgusting warthogs wallowing in the mud. Oh yes, another agreed. Truly revolting creatures. Charlie's face grew hotter and hotter until he couldn't hold his tongue any longer. At least those hogs know how to have fun and don't spend their time putting others down, Charlie scolded. And they know how to care for each other. He added quietly to himself. Fun? The head flamingo scoffed. What kind of unsophisticated creature could possibly have fun in the mud? Charlie scowled at the pompous flamingo. Then, 
He smiled. I'll tell you who would have fun in the mud, he said while loosening his bow tie. Oh yes, and who would? asked the flamingo. Charlie threw his shirt over his head, dropped to all fours and sprinted towards the hogs. I'll tell you who, he yelled over his shoulder as he ran. As he closed in on the mud puddle, he leapt high into the air and yelled, me, just before he splashed down into the mud to the joy and laughter of all his friends and family. Now, have I nailed all I wanted to in my checklist? Let's check it out. Your character solves their problem. So what I've done here is I've actually made the flamingos a little worse and uh, made them a bit horrible. So Charlie can sort of reflect on how judgmental he used to be and then, you know, obviously change his ways or change his attitude. So yes, Charlie's attitude has changed. He realized that it doesn't matter if you're rolling around in mud as long as you look after each other and care for each other. So we've solved the problem and he's rejoined his family with a brand new attitude. So he can be, I guess, accepted back into his group. Show don't tell. I've spoken about how Charlie's face was growing hotter and hotter, implying that he was getting madder as, as the flamingos were talking and bad-mouthing his friends and family. Uh, what do we see? Well, we see lots of animals describing the ridiculous red rumps on the beasts, talking about the baboons, which might make for a really cool picture as well. How do we feel? Uh, well, I guess Charlie sort of speaking quietly to himself, he realized um, that it doesn't really matter if you play in the mud uh, or if you're a little bit unsophisticated as long as you look after each other and care about each other. So we're feeling reflective here um, after he sort of got worked up and mad and he realized what was important to him. What do we hear? Lots of dialogue here. Um, Charlie shouting as he's jumping and splashing into the mud. So plenty of... Uh, writing with our senses in the resolution. So there you have it guys, a resolution to happy as a hog out of mud where Charlie finally realizes what's really important to him and uh, that he's just got to change his attitude and be with the people that truly care about him. So I'm gonna clip that into the back of what I've already got. And then the next lesson will be the very last one when it comes to our structure. That's when we write a fabulous ending and um, sort of wrap it all up. And then from there, we can start doing the fun editing and uh, spicing up the writing. And of course, what I love to do, doing the drawings, of course, and putting it all together. I hope you enjoyed that guys. Homework as usual, make sure you are reading plenty. Illustrators draw every single day. And of course, make sure that you have a resolution to your problem where your character uh, solves, solves whatever conflict they were having. And um, I'll see you next time. Happy reading, happy creating.